Hello and welcome to Sports Hub. Thank you so much for joining us. This is a program which gives sports personalities a chance to share their stories. My name is Modern Sinkal. As usual, we'll give you selected results from the weekend plus tomorrow's fixtures, then later have a chat with my guests in the studio. So you can be part of the program by calling the number that will be displayed on the screen. Um, well, uh, last week you failed to identify the photo um, where um, there were uh, three sports personalities I asked you to identify, but I didn't receive any call. That means it's either you failed to call in or maybe you didn't know the answer. So I'll give you the answer right away. So on that photo, um, two of the players, so there was Tenant Chulumba, uh, he is a football coach uh, in Zambia currently. There was also uh, Moses Masua, who is the late, he died in that plane crash in 1993. So I have another quiz for you. How much do you know about your sports personalities? Um, so let's see this photo and see actually a series of photos. Uh, who is that boxer in green? Can you identify that boxer in green? He's achieved something for Zambia. Um, he's won a medal. I won't mention which tournament. Uh, but at least just know that he's won at least a medal at an important event, a mouth sport event. Who is that boxer? Uh, call us. The number will be displayed on the screen. We want to know how much you know your sports personalities. And we'll be so glad to hear from you. Right. So identify that boxer uh, for us. Right. So time, time now for me to introduce my guests in the studio. And the first one is Chitumbo. Mwari from the chess circles. So he recently took part in the World Chess Championship uh, in uh, Russia, and that's him. He's looking majestic, uh, looking very smart in his suit. Um, well, you know, chess players, they're intelligent, and you can even tell uh, from the dressing. So he's 35 years of age, and he is an international chess master. I welcome you to Sports Hub. Then we also have Matthews Makina. He is the fe uh, Federation Drafts Master, also looking very smart in a suit there. He is the current national champion in drafts. So the two gentlemen that are here uh, play the sport on the board. So one on the chess board, the other one on the draft board. But I don't know if both I know how to play the each other sport so <laughs> we'll find out when i host them so gentlemen you are welcome you can come and join me on the seat here so that we can know your stories where are you coming from where's chitumbo mari coming from where's matthews makina coming from uh thank you very much for joining us so before um we delve more into your stories first we give some of the results uh from the weekend and obviously the main one was the Kosafa Cup final uh, involving South Africa, the host. Remember, the tournament was held at, uh, in Nelson Mandela Bay. Uh, so South Africa, the host, beat Senegal by... Um, actually, it was 5-4 on penalties. So it was new new um, in um, regulation time. Then later on, South Africa won 5-4 on penalties. So congratulations to South Africa and they've won their fifth title. Uh, this is a tournament where Zambia didn't perform well. They were eliminated at a group stage level. It was an embarrassing exit. Zambia exiting, imagine Kosafa uh, exiting at um, group stage level. If it was AFCON, you may understand. It's clear that they carried the strongest uh, squad that is playing currently, and it's a squad that is expected to play in the World Cup qualifiers starting in September. So it was unfortunate. Um, result there for Zambia, but congratulations to South Africa. Um, then in Division 1 playoffs, so we know now which teams will be playing Eden University National Division 1 League, and these are Quattro Kalumbila representing Northwestern Province, and uh, there is also ZNS Luamfumu representing Luapula Province, Jomolo FC representing Copper Belt Province, and also Young Green Buffaloes representing uh, Lusaka province. So these are the four teams that are coming to the Eden University uh, Division 1 League. And these games will be live on TV3. So this is the channel that brings you uh, all this sports content. Talking about the Olympics, I'm so excited that the Olympics are starting. 
and the Copper Queens tomorrow will be showing off against the Netherlands. What a game it will be. So this game will be at 13 hours. So we'll see how the Barbara Bandas, the Margaret Belemus, the Hezonaris of this world will be able to play against uh, the Netherlands. Uh, it's, a, it's quite a tough group. Because there's also Brazil in there and also China. So all the best to the Copa Queens. Right. So um, this program is all about profiles. So before I talk to Jitumbo Mwali and Matthews Makina, let's look at another profile of a 17-year-old boy um, who is into rowing. And he's just won himself a whooping uh, scholarship worth 150000 U.S. dollars, and that is at Radley College in the United Kingdom, uh, one of the biggest schools in the United Kingdom. So here's the profile of uh, Mark Kakoma. Rowing is the sport of racing boats using oars. The sport of rowing is slowly growing in Zambia. A number of young boys and girls have come up to join the sport. Kansanshi Rowing Club in Solwezi, Northwestern Province, has been nurturing young talent. One such talented rower is 17-year-old Makakoma of Lusaka. He shares his story on how he started rowing. I started rowing in 2019, uh, June it was. And I started rowing essentially just to try something new. My friend and I thought that it would be fun to try out and... We just gave it a shot, and here I am today. It was just a, it was just an ergo session that we started off with. Nothing too crazy. We didn't even start on the water, but just started it pretty simply in the gym. And I fell in. Well, I really started to enjoy it a lot then. Mark was a student at Trident College in Solwezi, and recalls how instrumental the school was in his rowing career. My school offered rowing. Not many schools here in Zambia offer rowing, so that was a start. I mean, it felt really great to be part of a, a school and a community that had a huge diversity in the sports that they offered. Um, I really enjoyed just, you know, participating, the flexibility around how we, you know, had our study sessions or periods and how we had our afternoons set aside for sports and activities. Of our own interest and I believe that my school assisted me with regards to you know getting me started with rowing and I feel very grateful for that. It is a new dawn for 17 year old Zambian rower Mark Kakoma who has landed himself a scholarship at Radley College in the United Kingdom worth about 150,000 US dollars. Mark earned a place at one of the best learning institutions due to his rowing and academic excellence in the last two years. This is a place where Mark Kakoma has been practicing from and the golden opportunity has come as a result of this place. Despite only rowing for two years, Mark made a mark and earned himself a two-year scholarship from Radley College in the United Kingdom. I'm just... I'm still very shocked and surprised at the whole situation, to be entirely honest. I feel that it's been, it's been, it's been very quick. Everything's been very, you know, sudden. But I'm just very excited and filled with anticipation for what's what's to come. Um, I'm really excited at the prospect of going to Radley, and I'm super humbled and really appreciative of the opportunity that has been granted to me and I hope to make the most of it and I'm super excited to do so. The scholarship to Radley College is exceptional, you know, for him to be able to go to England for his sixth form, to be able to row and to be part of arguably the best school in the world. Um, we're not saying that Zambia can't provide that. Zambia does provide all those things. The school he's at is an exceptional school and the opportunities are exceptional. What he has won is the opportunity to go to another country to learn in order to bring all those skills back to Zambia to help the Zambian community and the community that he's part of and is from. His sponsors at the rowing club Kansanshi Mining PLC 
and former school Trident College are so proud of Mark's achievement. We're very, very excited as a company uh, because Kansashi Mining uh, you know, sponsors a lot of these juniors. And if he has excelled to a level where even international organizations and uh, you know, institutions are prepared to sponsor him on a very expensive scholarship, they have obviously also seen what talent has been latent. If it hadn't been tapped, it would still be in the ground. Well, to be quite honest, he's been an exceptional student. Uh, he's an exceptional academic. We're expecting fantastic RGCSE results from him. Uh, he's also gotten himself involved in all kinds of sporting activities, most notably rowing in recent years. And the rowing has given him opportunities to, uh, to fly further afield. Uh, he really is going to be sorely missed here. Uh, because he is an exceptional student and an exceptional leader in every way. We look forward to him coming back one day to share some of the experiences that he has in the UK with his fellow Zambian students and uh, other leaders. Coach Stevenson and Bartholomew Mukuta have spoken highly of Mark and believe he will succeed in the United Kingdom. Stan was on it. He was still walking around until I guarantee him. But the idea is that you're so balanced that that boat sucking driving, sucking driving, there isn't any shenanigans here. So you, you can see if you imagine me in the shell, just suck the boat, push it away, suck the boat. He is exceptionally good technically, so he really understands how to make a boat move really fast uh, and efficiently. Um, He's still got a way to go in terms of his fitness and his power to become up into the elite levels of rowing, but he's still young. So his potential is absolutely enormous. Actually, what makes him so great at the sport is his mindset rather than his physique. Okay, he is quite big, and for a Zambian, he's, he's, he's big and strong. But his mindset is what means that he, you know, he, he can keep training, he's dedicated, um, he's often on the water training, so his technique has been refined really beautifully. He's committed to physical training as well. He wants to push himself hard. He can see the opportunities, and he's taken those opportunities. So it's the mindset, really, that's helped him more than anything else. Uh, I would say Mark uh, is a good rower. He's well committed. He can understand you when you ask for help. He likes helping people. If you need help, you just go to him. He's going to help you. Uh, that kind of person who likes helping like preparing other people so that they can know what so that they can learn from him and also learn from you. I would just like to wish him for the best and just keep on I, I would like to keep on doing the same thing that he's doing here. Keep focusing on what he's doing and not look on what other people are doing, just be determined. He has given credit to his coach for laying a good foundation. I, I feel that my coach Steve-O is like a mentor to me. Um, he's always smiling, always doing his best to encourage everyone around him, always being as positive and as forward-thinking as anyone I've ever met. He is he's a great person and I, I feel like he's, he's a huge figure and a, a really important person in my life and he has helped me in a lot of ways. I am so grateful to him and I don't know what I would have done without him. I feel that he is he's incredible. One of the best people I've ever met in my life. Probably the best. And I'm I look up to him and I hope to be like him one day. He's a great person. Sport is very good for our health. Now it can be all forms of different sports, swimming, you know, you've cited football, cycling and so on. But it's also an opportunity to help us identify talent. Much as it keeps us fit and in good health, for the youth especially, it enables us to identify talent. You know, there's a lot of talent in Zambia. Uh, be it in athletics and all these other minority sports, I would call them. There's a lot of talent, but it hasn't been tapped. 
So, we believe, as part of our philosophy, development of sport amongst the youth should be one of our, our priorities. That will be a legacy issue. When the mine uh, stops operating here, you know, people will be able to remember, ah, that young man was trained by the mine in this sport. Look what has happened to, to the footballers like Fashion Sakala, Inok Mwepu, Patson Daka. So, that can extend to other minority sports. That is what is our main motivation. Radley College, which is a boys' public boarding school, was founded in 1847 and is recognized for its success in rowing, among other sports disciplines. With this opportunity, Zambia would rely on Mark to become the first rower to represent the country at the Olympic Games. Modern Sinkala ZNBC Sport, Solwezi, Northwestern Province. Right, that's Mark Takoma, 17 years of age. He'll be heading to Radley College in the United Kingdom, and that will be next month in August. Congratulations to him and all the best. Uh, right. So, well, for now, we dance to some music, and this song is dedicated to the Copper Queens who will be playing Netherlands tomorrow, and this song is done by Ozzy and Kabova.
Kabova, Ben Blazer, and also General Ozzy giving us that song dedicated to the Chipolo Polo Queens. So let me say the Copper Queens. And also dedicated to Chitumba Mwari, who beat a grandmaster in Russia. Well, time for me to talk to the two gentlemen. Let me start with you, Chitumba Mwari. Um, well, congratulations, first of all, for beating a grandmaster in Russia. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, all right. Much. Um, so give us the experience. How was it at the World Championship? Uh, at the World Championship, that was my first time participating at the FIDE World, World Cup. Uh, it's a knockout um, event. And definitely we have all the strong players uh, around the world participating in it. So it was a, it was a good experience because I tried, I did something that uh, um, that uh, uh, our participants uh, who went there felt to do. And uh, I was uh, now, uh, everyone was, uh, most everyone was supporting me. You know, I had support from the Zambia people. And definitely now I was the only black person out there fighting it out, trying to go to the second round. It's, uh, it's a hard out, definitely, especially for Southern African chess players. Okay, so you played the first game on Monday, you lost? Yes, I did lose. Then you caught up with him in the second game on Tuesday? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, did you expect it? How was it? Well, um, I'd, okay, to tell you the truth, I didn't, I didn't really expect it, but when I went at the board, you know, I started playing against the uh, pieces. Not actually the grandmaster, so definitely it created a lot of opportunities for me. It was a big upset, uh, and definitely when um, uh, the World Chess Federation tweeted about it, it went viral from there. And even Zambian social media, I was so shocked. But uh, the support and the love was overwhelming, and uh, it was tough. It was tough. Oh, yeah, okay. I can just imagine, and I can just, I can just imagine your feeling, the way you were feeling after that the whole thing went viral. Yes, yes, I was, I was shocked. You know, people, you know, I'm going back to my hotel room when uh, the World Chess Federation tweeted about my win. You know, people congratulated me, uh, only to be told later, no, I'm trending on the World Chess Federation website and Twitter for the upset. So definitely. And later on, I found out I was all over social media. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember this, you know. When I won the 2006 African Junior Under-20 Championship, I think I went viral on print media and, uh, and ZNBC definitely was there. And uh, all African games, silver and bronze medal. So that was it. Oh, incredible. Um, and we were hoping that you'd continue with the same momentum. Then what happened there after when you went for a, a tie break? Well, the tie break, the tie breaks are tricky. It's uh, shorter time intervals. Uh, you play shorter time. It's not a classic. Uh, classic, you play one hour, 30 minutes. The tie break, the rapid, you play 25 minutes. So definitely, it's sort of a, a new game. It's fast, faster, so you have to, you have to change your course. So that's what happened. Hmm, okay. All right. I'll get back to you. Um, let me talk to Matthews Makina now. He is the Federation Master. Um, he is the current national champion in drafts. Um, Matthews, um, tell us, how did you start playing draft? Yeah, I, I started playing draft when I was actually a boy. Mm. And, uh, that was in uh, 1988. Yeah, because my father was there. Okay, all right. I'll, I'll get back to you uh, later on um, as you um, tell us how you started playing. But let me come back to uh, Chitumbo Mwari. Um, I know there's a lot to talk about you. Um, first, uh, give us a brief background of how you started playing chess. Well, uh, I started. I was taught by my immediate older brother chess. Uh, we started playing from uh, home. Definitely, you become the house champion. You know, you go on and go on, and uh, definitely, my father was uh, a chairman for Kawe Kachek back in Kawe in the nineties and uh, Central Province chairman. So definitely, it's, it all starts from you being a home champion and it goes to schools and everything, nationals, and definitely, uh, it's, um, it has been a long road. Uh, uh, Zambia National Chess Championship, so there are a lot of championships that have really won. Hmm. All right. And uh, which one was your, um, your, your biggest, or let me say your major, um, trophy that you won, the okay. first major trophy. The ma first major trophy was uh, the Zambia National. 
okay, I had born, I would, I had born the juniors, you know, and I think, but definitely the major was Zambia National Chess Championship in 2006. But uh, the major was that I can talk about definitely the achievement is an African Under 20 Chess Championship in 2006 in Botswana. And uh, uh, silver and bronze medal is at the African Games. So those I can talk about. And certainly this achievement, it's a stepping stone for Zambia chess players. And it has brought some boost in Zambia chess players. And I hope somebody has been inspired. Mm. So in 2007, that's when you became international master? Yes, in 2006. By me winning the African Under 20 Chess Championship, I was awarded uh, the title of international master, which is. Uh, just a level below a grandmaster title. Mm, okay. So uh, from 2007, I'm counting, it's about 14 years. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And you haven't attained the title of grandmaster yet? Uh, it's very difficult. Definitely, you need to go professional. But most of, the, most of us chess players in Zambia are, let me say, semi pro. So it's very difficult. You know, you have to be a pro to play at that and constantly travel around the world, so it is a hurdle. It is a hurdle. Okay, all right. Let me see if we can get Matthews Makina now. We are not getting you earlier on, so um, hopefully we can get you now. Um, tell us how you started uh, the game of drafts. Yeah, I, I started actually um, when I was a boy. Uh, that was in 1988. Okay, so we can't get you again. Um, I don't know, maybe you woke up on the wrong side of the bed today, <laughs> but we'll fix it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, let's get back to uh, Chitumbe Mwali. Um, so, during your play, you've, you've played for so many clubs. Um, I know among them is Red Arrows, right? Yes, yes, mm. yes, Red Arrows Chess Club. Uh, that's what club I play for. Okay. Um, how has it been at club level? At club level, definitely, we have won so many championships with Red Arrows. That they've and some of the achievement, especially back in 2006, 2007, I was with Red Arrows. So, and the national championship, I was with Red Arrows. Uh, we've been Red Arrows almost all my chess life. I mean, for about, uh, is it 14 years now? It's going 17, 14 years. Mm. Yes. So. Okay. So, um, let's try Matthews now. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So um, yes, uh, the background of your your, your draft. Yes, hopefully now you are you mm. are able to get me. Okay, yes, we're able to oh, get oh, you oh, now. That's yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I, I started playing draft when I was a boy. That was in 1988. I was in grade five. 88. Yes. Wow. <laughs> My father was a, a, a draft player, uh, so he used to was a teacher. He uh, used to play with. Uh, uh, colleagues and so on. But was not the champion. He used to be beaten by one teacher and I didn't like it. Mm. So I, 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 he taught me how to play, but I got so much interested in the game and uh, I, I improved so rapidly. But uh, my marked improvement came uh, in the 1990s when I came to Lusaka where I found quite a number of polished players. From where? From, from Itesh Tej, okay. which is in Central Province. Mm, okay. So when I came to Lusaka, I found quite a number. Actually, I was, when I was in Itesh Tej, I was thinking I was the best player in the whole country. But when I ca came to Lusaka, I was very amazed that I, I found very polished players. Mm. At that particular time, there was a player called Inambao, who was actually the Midlands champion, was very good. Then he, uh, the late Tentan Mwanza, actually we call him the father of draft in Zambia, extremely good. Mm. I found other players like Kennedy Piri, Mwaza Sakala, oh, uh, wow. Lukanga Mambwe. Who is the grandmaster the now? The grandmaster now, the champion mm. of Africa. Mm. Uh, we call him Doc Soldier. Uh, there was also Albert Shamwele, the late. Uh, they were very good. I discovered that I was actually not in their level. And, mm. that, uh, and that helped me now to work extremely hard. Well, at, at the moment, I, I, I can actually grade myself to be actually within that bracket. Okay. <laughs> of the elites. Of the elites. <laughs> yes, because now you are the uh, federation master. I am the federation master, actually, the national champion. All right. Um, but uh, you started playing, you know, drafts. Uh, that's about 30, uh, 30, uh, 33 years ago. Yes, elites. And you are not yet a grandmaster. 
I'm not yet a grandmaster. <laughs> Probably, I, I, it could be, it's only now mm. that um, we are going professional. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we have just been playing draft as a social game. There have been no tournaments. Because for you to, to be grandmaster, like Lukanga Mambwe, you need to, to win uh, the Continental Championship. Mm. Yeah, and to be a fe federation master, what I am now, you need to, to win the national championship. So we ha have participated in, in uh, so far, mm, I think four championship. Um, that's two national and two inter uh, two continental championship. Uh, so I hopefully uh, that is actually my target. That uh, next time we have um, um, a continental tournament. Uh, I work very hard and I'm very hopeful looking at uh, the improvement that I've made now uh, that uh, I'll be able to, to grab that title. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> so how can you differentiate the drafts we are playing then in the 80s or 90s and the current uh, game? There is a marked difference. Mm. Very, very big difference. As I told you when I started, I was actually thinking that I knew the game. But I realized later on that uh, actually I was an amateur. Mm. Yeah, because you see, like um, at the moment, if you if you don't face me in random, especially if you are not a professional, you don't face me in, in random. Mm. It will be very difficult for you to win the game mm. because there are certain games we have memorized. So there, can you identify yourself there? Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm in a cap there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that which, was which player were you playing with? I was uh, playing Mbuche Piri. Muche Piri. Muche Piri, that is uh, a player from um, Petaoke. Okay. Ah, all right. And I'm um, sure so you won that game. I, I, I won that. I beat him one year. Okay. All right. Actually, uh, he was actually leading the log. So when I beat him one year, that's when I took over. And uh, I was leading throughout until I became champion. Okay. So which are some of the players that you fear? Say, mm, when we meet this player or when we meet this club, it's always a, a tough man. Uh, there are so many good players, especially Lusaka and Copper Belt. Uh, but uh, one player I feel is a very accomplished player is Mwaza Sakala. There are um, uh, other players like Lukanga Mambwe. I've not played Lukanga Mambwe many times. I think probably I just faced him in a tournament in Malawi when he won the, 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 the tournament there and became Grandmaster. Uh, but I've played uh, Mwaza Sakara several times and uh, looking at the style of play, uh, the, the level of county, um, I grade him highly. There is also... But did you win against him? Oh yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, I, I do, and actually, currently, I think he has also some fears about me because uh, I've really improved. Okay. He's a federation master, and I faced him in, uh, in the tournament, and uh, in that tournament, actually, we drew. But uh, we have players like Lukanga Mambu. I think he's the most respected player in draft in Zambia because of what he has achieved. Uh, he's a product of Kaunda Square. He's quite good in both draft and chess, actually. Okay. Probably he can even uh, square it with the Chitumbo. <laughs> 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 do you play chess yourself? I Manis? do. I, I, I do play chess, yes. But not at a competitive uh, level? Uh, not at a competitive level. Okay. Uh, I do, you know, I like mind games. Mm -hmm. I do play chess. And actually, my young brother is quite very good. Yeah, but um, um, I think I invested so much in draft. So I spend much of my time playing draft. But we in Lusaka, um, we have um, other players. There is a young boy, a grade 7 boy. Is William it? Yeah, Chinzewe. Eight. William Chinzewe. William Chinzewe is the terrorizing players in, in Lusaka. And as it is at the moment, it's very, very difficult to face that boy. Especially if you face him, you play him many games. Mm. Play him two games, four games, yes. But if you play him many games, many big players have fallen at the hands of um, William Chinzewe. We have another one, Elijah Chanda, who is nicknamed Chameleon. Those uh, young boys are very deadly in the game of draft. 
But I managed to win that tournament, uh, probably also because of experience. Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but there's also another grandmaster by the name of uh, Richard Mwamba. Richard Mwamba. Uh, yes, uh, several times those are my uh, 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 sparring partners. Um, uh, Muganza is Congolese but based in Zambia, who is actually also a grandmaster. We have actually played several times. Actually, in the tournament, I beat him. Mm. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> wow. Interesting. All right. Uh, so let me get back to Chitumbo Mwali. Um, Chitumbo, from the, the time you started playing, uh, yes. which player would you say is the toughest player you've ever faced? Or who are some of the players you feel are tough when you meet? Uh, Zambian chess players? Or yes. Or Zambian? Zamb Zambian. Well, um, of course, uh, I've never played Diamond because by the time we are coming up he was out of Zambia he was in America and that's the only grandmaster that Zambia yes, has ever definitely produced he's a, he's a record black I mean he's a third black grandmaster in the world and there are only four black chess black grandmasters so definitely we, we look up to him and uh, definitely inspired and sparked he was playing the feed he used to participate in the feed the world cup so he's uh, definitely at his peak but I don't know right now because he's not active so definitely maybe his level has gone down but there are a lot of good chess players and uh, a lot of records have been played. We've got Gillian Warrior, we've got uh, Daniel Jerry, Stanley Chumfo, Anaselungu, you know, Kelvin Marembeka, you know, uh, Douglas Mnenga, Prince. We've got all these players uh, playing chess. So even Andrew Kayonde. So we've got all these players who, who are very strong in them. There, but uh, definitely, if, uh, at his peak, it's someone. It's Amon. Yes, okay. It's definitely some wow. So when you meet the likes of Daniel Jerry and the likes of Andrew Kayonde, uh, it's not very tough when you meet them in the league. Well, uh, even in tournaments we play, so it's not very tough, you know. But uh, we do we do have some tough encounters, but uh, it's not uh, it's not compared to Amon because I've studied Amon's game and uh, watched him. I used to follow him, so I was following his game at his peak. So is to play at that high level. So. Okay. Uh, what do you think is the best technique if you are to be a chess player? What do you need to do if you are to be a good chess player? Well, there, there are a lot of, uh, you need to study. There, there, there's no easy way out. It's just like school. You need to get the books. You need, uh, now, now it's even much easier. You can get chess softwares uh, everywhere. So you can use those to improve yourself. And uh, you need to play constantly. Mm. You, need, you know, you, for you to become a grandmaster, you need to be beating grandmaster. That's the way it is. So you need to play a lot of tournament, uh, travel in Europe, especially in Europe. That's where the strong chess players. Okay. How long do you think it would take for you to become a grandmaster? How long? It, uh, it can take one year, two years, but definitely I'll need the coach. I need, I need somebody, you know, I need somebody, it's certainly a coach that can uh, help me with preparation against uh, strong chess players like uh, the World Cup, you know, playing at that level, you need to have somebody who use your second who can research for you. I could even see it after, um, after we played, uh, we tied and went to the no knockout stage against my opponent. He has somebody, they researched now, they realized that uh, it was tricky to beat me, so he researched, uh, definitely had somebody, his second coach, who was doing all that for him and uh, definitely him, he just had to come and play what the coach had told him to do. Hmm. So you need that type of expertise. You know, most some, some chess players, the world champion uh, Magnus Carlsen probably has got four or five uh, strong grandmasters uh, who are helping prepare the opening and uh, researching the opponent. So you need that at that level for a profession. Okay. All right. Um, so what's your target for now? Uh, target for now is to continue representing the country to my best of ability and uh, continue training. Keep up a powerful representation for the country. All right. The, Have you played drafts before? Yes, we used to play it when uh, back at home with my mother. So. But they're yeah. not very good. No, I don't, no, I'm not good. <laughs> I, I need to organize a, 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 a game. So first you play drafts, the two of you. Then later on play chess, we see <laughs> who would win what. <laughs> okay, so um, for you, Matthews, um, when do you think, or how long do you think it would take uh, for you to become a grandmaster? Yeah, actually, uh, the level at which I'm playing now, uh, looking at uh, uh, the standards of draft in Zambia are high. Actually, we, 
we only realized when we started participa participating in tournaments. The level at which I'm playing, I feel that if I'm to participate in a number of uh, tournaments, I think it, it, it cannot take long before I, I become a grandmaster. Actually, that's my target. The only problem that I have now, I have um, a very little playing time because my profession is robbing me of a lot of time. So I'm able to play only during weekends. What is just um, of help to me, it is uh, the software. At least I have uh, a software on my computer. I'm able to play when I'm free, challenge the computer. I think that is actually what is keeping me improving. OK. Yeah. All right. Um, are, you, are you able to share what you do off drafts? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, OK. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I am able to, to, to share what I do off draft. I, I'm a teacher and a lawyer by profession. Uh, hmm. So, so when, he, uh, when I'm not playing draft, um, I'm, I'm actually committed to my profession. I'm actually a, hmm. a teacher of law. I'm a lecturer. Nice. <laughs> yes. And how do you balance the two? You manage very well? I do. Uh, I, do. I, I think my inspiration is the late Tent Anwanza. He was well read, but he, he was actually the greatest of all times. He had time to play draft. He had time to commit himself to academia uh, so he was an inspiration to me mm -hmm. and I, I i just thought that i needed to upgrade myself education wise but i continue playing the game to keep me uh, uh, to keep my, to keep me alive uh, the, you see the mind needs to i uh, need to, to needs to be exercised all, all the time Mm. Then people who meet me, they say, but uh, sir, you, you still look young and so on. But we, we, you know, sports, especially mind games, they have an effect also on aging. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> how, 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 lo how long do you think you have, um, how many years do you think you have before you can retire completely from playing? I, I, I don't really think that I'll be able to retire. <laughs> I, may, I may continue playing, but probably at some point I may not be as active as I am now. Okay. And maybe probably just participate in ensuring that maybe administratively mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, I contribute to the development of the game, which I do now, because apart from being a player, I'm actually in the national executive. Okay, mm. nice. All right, so the number is uh, displayed on the screen. Call us. You can tell us about um, that photo we showed you earlier on. Who is that boxer in that photo? He achieved something, something great uh, way back. Who is that boxer? Call us and tell us who the boxer is. <laughs> so <laughs> if you want to answer, um, certainly uh, before the end of the program, I'll be able to review uh, the name of that boxer. Um, if you're not answering, you can just call us just to ask anything, then we'll be able to tell you. So, <laughs> right. So, Chitumbo, um, yes. what about you? What else do you do away from chess? Uh, I'm an accountant. Uh, I'm in the civil service. And I'm an accountant in the civil service. That's okay. Uh, yes. Okay, That's interesting. Super. Interesting. And how many more years do you think you have to play chess? Well, you know, my sport, you can continue playing. Uh, I, um, I think I've got my whole lifetime, I guess. Mm. I'll just continue playing. But uh, as, as usual, I won't be that active. I won't be that active, but I'll continue playing, definitely. You also manage to balance up very well, work and, and chase? Um, uh, well, uh, it has been very difficult uh, for me to balance up. Uh, uh, Chess-wise, uh, uh, because of the pressures at work, so chess... Um, has been, it has been just difficult. Uh, it's just been difficult, but uh, I'm trying, and uh, definitely I'm pushing to balance up. All right. So, gentlemen, um, I'll subject you to a challenge uh, okay. later on, the two of you. Okay. Um, I know you are all dressed up in suits, but I'm sure you can manage to, to juggle the ball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 all right. So, for now, let me introduce uh, Chilufia um, to tell us what is trending. As uh, that now, <coughs> Trufia, good evening and welcome to the program. Good evening, Morden. Thank you for, for having me here. Okay, how are you doing? How has been your day? Uh, my day has been okay. I've been fine. Uh, good evening, gentlemen in studio. Good evening. Thank you. Okay, great. So, um, uh, tell us what is trending. 
Yes, with me I have some interesting stories from the weekend and earlier this week. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the most trending stories is this one, the departure of Mitchell. Last week Faz announced that Mitchell, they've separated with Faz and with his departure came a lot of uh, suggestion from, from, from the public, from soccer fans, who will succeed him, who will succeed him and one, one name was suggested the most by soccer fans, this man right here. The they former. want to Wada Wada. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And speaking to journalist Wada, also confirmed that he's interested in the position of being the coach for Zambia once again, if he's being called upon. The next story that Do I have... Do you think he would make a good coach uh, for Zambia once he comes back again? Yes, yes. With his experience, I think he might... <laughs> he might be able to, 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 to make us qualify to the World Cup this time around. Indeed. Then anyway, we still remember the champagne football that Zambia was subjected to when he was at the helm. Yes. yes. All right. And then with me, this is a, uh, the, the striker for the Zambia national women's soccer team. They are currently in Tokyo with their game tomorrow. This is the Netherlands. Uh, she was urging her teammates to work extra hard and ensure that they, they managed to get the three points against the, 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 uh, the Netherlands in their opener for tomorrow's game. That's the second story I have. And then the third story. Okay, so, hmm. Awesome, I can see those are Zambian <laughs> referees. Yes, those are Zambian referees. Uh, the Zambian referee was the, the one in charge of officiating the match between the South Africa, South and, Africa Senegal. and Senegal, the Kosafa final. Yes, so he made Zambia proud by being. Is that uh, Audrey Nkole? Audrey Nkole, and then the assistant Diana. He was the match, match official for that game. Awesome. Okay. And then the last story for this evening for some, for the cycling world, mm -hmm. this is a very famous gentleman outstanding during this year's Tour de France. He won almost everything in this year's Tour de France, being the, young, the best youngest rider, the king of the mountains, and then the overall winner, the yellow jersey. More outstanding so far. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Chirufia Mukosha. Thank you for, so much for Mugu. coming through. And uh, what, what, what's your prediction? Zambia against Netherlands tomorrow? Uh, Zambia are winning. <laughs> are winning. I think two goes by one. Two goes to one. Yes. <laughs> All right. Looking forward to that. Uh, all the best to the Copa Queens. That was uh, Chilufia Mukosha giving us the segment on uh, what is trending. So, time for the challenge now. I have to subject <laughs> <laughs> Matthews Makina, who is the Federation Master in drafts, um, who face, uh, who face uh, Chitumbo Mwari who is the international chess master. So <laughs> you start with ball juggling first. And um, I have um, glad, uh, Gladys Punyuka <laughs> who just uh, handed the ball to you so you can go just there uh, so that you can go and uh, juggle the ball. So we start with um, you, Matthew. Just take care of uh, the microphone, put it in the pocket um, so that we see how you juggle the ball around. <laughs> I know you are used to drafts. You are used to uh, using fingers. <laughs> uh, this time you use your feet. <laughs> so, yes, that's uh, Matthew wow, Makina. Wow, wow, gets wow, the ball, wow. looks at it, and <laughs> there you go. You can and bounces it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay, so 11, <laughs> we'll see how many stumbo you will get. <laughs> so yeah. it's chess up against drafts, mind games. But this time, uh, they're going physical. Uh, let's see uh, how they will handle. So mm -hmm. Chitumbo Mwari majestically walks towards <laughs> the ball and picks it. Yeah, and there you can go one, two. <laughs> Three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I didn't so, start proper. The shoes, <laughs> the shoes, so, uh, we so definitely for, need to. <laughs> so for ball juggling, um, <laughs> the winner is Matthews uh, Makina <laughs> from Drafts. But we have another challenge. Um, so you can go over there. 
to that podium. Um, you compete in arm wrestling. <laughs> you see who has most strength. <laughs> you can see you. Chitumbo, Chitumbo is a huge. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Chitumbo is looking huge, and so we'll see whether it's about being huge or, or not. So know. you can just sanitize yourselves over there. We have hand sanitizer okay. uh, before you do the ball juggling. <laughs> So, yes, and um, yes, so you can just put the hand sanitizer down because that's the podium you're using and you can move it slightly in the center so that we see you nicely as you, so you can move the podium slightly in the center, yes, the podium there, you can, you move it, yes, you this move one? it, yeah. yes, okay. move it in the center, in the center so that, uh -huh, there, yes, so, uh -huh. <laughs> so now you can put, you can rest your elbows there. Okay. Use your right. Yes. Right. I hope you are both strong <laughs> using your right. So I'll count up to three. Okay. You see? Okay. So one, two, three, go. Chitumbo Mwari up against Matthews Makina. Who is the strongest? I offer you draw. I offer you draw. I offer you draw. And, uh, I offer you a draw. You offer me a draw. I offer you a draw. I offer you a draw. <laughs> no, you see, I didn't I want to draw. beat him in both. Yes. <laughs> so it's one one. It's one one. You need a tiebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, we'll do a tiebreaker next time. So we'll see that uh, we've seen that physically, Shitumbo Mwari is stronger, and uh, uh, Makina they are winning in ball juggling, and um, uh, Chitumbo Mwari winning in uh, arm wrestling. So that's the program for today. Thank you very much for watching. Join us again next week. When we bring other guests on behalf of uh, my guests, um, Chitumba Mwari and Matthews Makina, my name is Moden Sinkara. See you next week. Goodbye.